During an episode of my Chrome Pipes and Pinstripes podcast with Joel Davis, he invited me to come attend one of his chop classes a couple hours from me. So the weekend of January 13th through 15th, I went to Scranton, Kansas to McIntyre's to shoot this video of chopping a 50 Merc. After all the introductions were done, it was time to get to work on the car. So the very first thing we did was wipe down all the areas where we're going to be grinding and welding to make sure they were all perfectly clean. After that, Joel started to lay out the chop. Where are we going to cut? What are we going to cut? And start explaining why we're going to do things in a certain order. One of the most important things he taught us very early on was anything you do to one side of the car, you need to exactly duplicate it on the other side of the car to give yourself the best chance of this chop coming out even and matching from side to side. I like to mark out pretty much the whole chop before you get to cutting and that way you can you know I you can ask questions as far as why I do it and all that sort of stuff later and you'll see what what goes on there but before we do that too we want to make some preliminary cuts on the A pillar tumble home is what the the distance between like say right underneath the drip rail and right at the the body B pillar here is right this little angle so you got to make all that stuff match up we're doing this yeah keep it symmetrical and keep it uh, even from top to bottom side to side right so that one's gonna be 16 right there nice and square and then after that you can kind of mess with the angle of the roof line and all these different things and so we're gonna have to see uh how much chop you want you know four well that's a number you're gonna have to <laughs> i'm gonna go all artist on you and avant-garde and say four is a number and uh the problem with numbers is you can't really tell when they look right i mean Four on one car might be the guy saying, well, I took four inches out of the A-pillar, which is, what, two and a half inches or something of actual height, right? So it's like, are you looking at four uh, vertically, four out of the A-pillar, four out of... Most important thing, as far as the chop goes, what we want to do is we want to make sure that our sheet metal is lining up right. So we don't want to have sheet metal kind of lopsided, As we went along, lopsided. Joel was teaching us some of the things he's learned over the years doing, uh, I believe he said somewhere around 30 chops so far. Lots of information to be gleamed here in just a two and a half day time. The size of the roof and the size of the roof in proportion to the size of the body and all of that. So once all of the preliminary cut lines were drawn on the car, the guys could start cutting on it. Right here we see Joel laying out some of the last cut lines that need to be done before we get started on the actual chop. Then it was time to let the guys loose and make some cuts. In these initial cuts, what we're doing is doing relief cuts. So we're not bracing the car yet because we're just trying to get all the reliefs done of the places that we'll have to move once the top moves. So once these relief cuts are done, once we've got all the lines marked where we're going to cut on top, then it was time to brace up the car and get ready for the first real cuts. Before you start actually removing pieces from the car, you really need to mark out where your cut's going to be. I keep saying this over and over because it's so important, and then label them. That way you know when you're going to put this corner of a window back together where this part originally came from on a car. In the rear deck area and around the back glass opening, we left a couple tabs of metal. We didn't cut all the way across the car, so that way we could lean the back glass opening forward once we took the A-pillar metal out and pushed the roof down to match the A-pillars again. So here Joel is showing us where we're going to leave a little metal and where we need to make sure we cut. Then it was time to brace up that rear window opening. That way it holds its shape perfectly so the glass fits right back in there. The guys climbed in the car and started building the cross car bracing so we can keep the shape of the car intact even when we take the roof out. Uh, and it's, you know, like when we did that, that old fleet line we ended up cutting the inner structure of the deck lid into like seven different pieces 
and then we cut the outer structure up and we had to cut it that much to make it flow and do the things that we wanted to do with it. So you're basically deconstructing things to the point of where you're going to need them to reconstruct it the way that you want it. And it's real difficult to kind of see that process in your brain unless you've done it a few times, but you know, some guys would have gotten that deck lid structure all apart and the deck lid scan off and they would have been like, oh man, this is a mess now, you know? And to me, it's like, yeah, but that's what we got to do, you know? It's, it's just, it's part of the process. Um, Manny, you had a question about the B-pillars. Right. So why it was marked on the B-pillars? like on With all the, the corners, corners and stuff? Right, if you were just because uh, it's going to be in an angle at the end. And... Uh, if you want to stay straight, if you don't need to mark those. Yeah, you don't need to do those if you're keeping it straight because you're just moving things around and all. Yeah. yeah what was the reason of the bracing in the inside? Just, uh, just to make sure things stay square. And I do kind of a minimal bracing thing because there's a lot that you want to move around, but you want the door to be braced and basically like the hinge up here keeps it, you know, where it is, and then like we brace the back of the door to keep it in and out and up and down where we want it, right? So the rest of it, you want to be able to move and stretch and, and move around a little bit. Uh, I've seen people build total spider webs in here and a lot of it's unnecessary. So, um, you know, like, like I said, if you weld the doors in there uh, on the back side only, that's, that's just fine. If you wanted to put a bar all the way across there you could but it's really not going to do too much else you know because the front's being held in with the hinges and stuff so uh yeah if you've got the dash in there and if you've got this in there you know you're going to be fine as far as all of that goes um i try not to mess with the the package tray like the main package tray mounts and stuff this one looks like it's a little loose on this end so we'll probably Retack that right before we start so it stays stronger and that way back here is is closer but with all the tubs and the floor being as solid as everything is on this one you don't have to worry about you know back here too much so anyway yeah it's important to do that it's important to cut the the places where they're good it's going to need cut before you close the doors so you can move them, otherwise it's a real pain in the butt to cut them later. You know, but it's like, that's like, you know, your fifth grade math teacher trying to get you to learn algebra or something too early. Sometimes it just doesn't click. Sometimes you got geniuses that, that go home and they chop a car and it's like as if I did it myself, you know? I mean, it's like they, they get it and it turns out really good. I, I, can't, I can't teach you the, the eye for design, but I can definitely teach you the process. And, and I think a lot of you guys will pick up the eye for design along the way. And to me, that's really important because that's what a lot of shops are lacking is, is some forethought and design. So, In addition to teaching us how to chop a car, Joel also took the opportunity to take an old fender that was pretty beat up, add a couple more dents, and show the guys how to remove those dents effectively. So uh, what we want to do... Now that I made that dent, I'm going to give one of you guys a job and uh, do you have like a mud hog or uh, something where we can 36 grit? The first step was using some pretty aggressive 36 grit to take all the paint off and get down to bare metal so that when you're working it, you're actually seeing what you're working on and not the paint on top of it. it didn't take too long and all that paint was removed. It was time right, to start guys, getting to work. Aggression out. So, uh... What's, you know, obviously I created the, uh, the big dent with a big hammer, right? So it's good to use a bigger hammer to get the big dent out, right? So uh, what you want to do is you want to identify your high and low spots. Obviously we got about a two inch or inch and a half low spot here. Also you want to use about the same contour as what you're bumping out, right? So. Look pretty nasty, but now there's uh, there's not much of it left, right? 
I took care of a lot of it just by bumping it out with this thing. So uh, dollies are not just dollies, they're also hammers if you need them to be. Because what's the, what's the other rule? Everything's, Everything's a hammer. Yeah, so don't, uh, don't put that online. <laughs> anyway, you hear that? That's on dolly, right? Once you get that, when it's, when it's off dolly, you get that a uh, little bit, little bit uh, hollower sound to it. So if you're identifying what's on dolly and what's off dolly, you can kind of tell. Now I want to be I want to be off dolly when I'm trying to get a low or a high crown off. I want to put the dolly in the low spot and then be beaten up on that crown. Now I'm not building a house, so I'm not going whack whack whack, right? I'm uh, you'll hear it a little bit. Little bit of rebound there it goes brr, 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 right and uh, it's like planishing I'm using my hammer as a little planishing tool again it's not the size of your hammer or, uh, how expensive it is it's how you use it right so you can see right here this is gonna be a high spot down here and I'm pushing up uh, on the back side with the dolly now how many sides does metal have inside and outside yeah that's two mm -hmm. right two sides so you can work both sides of your metal when you need to right you don't just work one side so i can identify my uh spots right here and all i'm doing is i'm using the light across here if this is perfectly right, shiny a little of that yeah it's perfectly shiny, you can see everything a lot better, right? Uh, that'll help highlight your... That'll help highlight things. Oh, dolly. Yeah, there's no dolly. <laughs> so, that was, uh, that was up here. Sometimes you really got to, you know, kind of pull up while you're, while you're pushing down on that. And it's okay to hear that on dolly clink. Uh, that means you're getting pretty close to, to where everything's uh, nice and flat. We're getting there. That's, uh, that's pretty close there. And that's feeling pretty good. So we've got a little low spot right here. I'm gonna try and uh, get this on here. Jeff's preparing a guide coat so you can kind of see where the high and low spots are. <coughs> you can do that. Uh, there's a few different ways of doing that. You can do that. You can do uh, uh, like use a 36 grit on like a big mud hog, you know, one of those, one of those uh, eight inch or 10 inch or whatever mud hogs and just get different scratches on it. So you can kind of see where everything is. Um, and then Jeff, can you grab that? Uh, that bullseye pick as well. All right, thank you. And again, I highly recommend that y'all uh, get a get a bullseye pick. So the black spots are going to be what? Low, exactly. So the real shiny spots are going to be high. The black spots are going to be low yet. So we can still use our our dolly to bump out some of these low spots. Oh 
And then we're also going to get that down. So you can keep on checking it. You can keep on checking it with this. We should have, uh, here, Mike, you wanna, you wanna go over that again? You should have uh, less low spots, yeah. And more, more silver showing up. You can give her one of these. All right. So we're getting there, and it's getting pretty darn close. And that's almost to the point right there where you could body work it. You can still do a few other things. Um, this is where this, this little... Uh, bullseye pick comes in handy. The bullseye is this part. You're just uh, looking through the bullseye and doing your picking. Now, like I said yesterday, if you've got, uh, if you've got a, a nice round tip on that thing, like I like to get a carriage bolt and then grind off all the little numbers and letters and stuff that are usually on carriage <laughs> bolts. Uh, then that works really good because you got a nice little domey thing to pick up on, right? And so you don't get the sharp points. I can show you. If it gets too sharp, I just put a little sharp point up there. And you can see the actual high spot right there, right? So there's a little tiny high spot just right there but I can take that back down. I'm just barely tapping it, but it's, it's real nice right now, right? So that's, uh, that's what progress looks like. Jeff, you'd probably body work it at that point, right? No, I'll keep going. You a little keep bit. going a little yeah, bit? A little okay. Bit more. So But you could. I mean that's you could. Plenty, that's plenty good. But. You could, but you could you keep going just a little bit. I'll, I'll at least work out this a little bit and this right here. Yeah. I'd probably I'd work out this top bit. to and I'm checking it with uh, 80 grit or a file or whatever it depends on what you prefer uh, and it's one of those things that the more time you spend on it the more time or the more uh, you'll get out and the, the better product you'll have at the end right so being we got rid of that little low spot. Now I got a little tiny high spot there. And again, there's barely any pressure to tap down that high spot. But it's right on Dolly. You hear that clinkety clink, right? And you can tell that's the difference between me really putting pressure on it and not putting pressure on it. But I'm barely barely tapping on that thing and uh, making progress so anyways if any of you guys want to put a dent in this fender and then uh, and then fix it make sure it's cool with Jeff yeah so as long as you fix it yeah as long as you fix it <laughs> right don't, so don't hit it in our mouth. did any guys learn anything on that radar. that yeah. little uh, thing was it worth doing spending 10 minutes on or whatever all right, very good. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Joel, so tell us what we did today at the uh, Joel Davis Chop Class. Well, hello there, Travis. Today what we did was we took this 1950 Mercury 
and we're getting ready to chop it, chop it this weekend here in Kansas. So we've started with marking out all the different spots that are going to be cut and uh, measuring, you know, uh, four inches right here. We're going to start with four inches out of the eight pillars. We measure it to make sure it's the same height from side to side. Uh, and we measure all of our reference marks and get those put in place. And uh, tomorrow we'll be ready to uh, chop this thing. We've got a B-pillar brace in inside the body there, and we're gonna brace the doors shut and finish up the back window brace where we'll have one more piece that goes across all of that. So again, we uh, welded it on the back side of that lip to make it easy to cut back out. Otherwise you got a whole bunch of junk to to cut out and uh, finesse in there, and this is gonna be the easy way to do it. So this is how we start, and you'll see in the next uh, next day or two how things go, and, and uh, it'll be a, a chopped car by Sunday night. Okay, that's basically it for Friday night of the weekend. Now I'm gonna play for you some of the testimonials from the end of the weekend, and we'll put these at the end of each of the three videos. Well, I came mainly for the back contouring and how to fit the back window in. And the front kind of laid down, everything went smooth, which I expected it to. The back window, I couldn't visualize how it was gonna go together. It looked so piecemeal and fragmented. And then it's trust in the process, right? So today it just, it laid out, right? You got the rod set up there, set it out. And then once we kind of leaned it out and got everything tacked it just all started to come together and i mean now it just looks great so i think that's the biggest piece i learned is how to do that you came properly. here for the money shot that's it man <laughs> yeah well you got it you got, got it. it yeah and uh, there's so many things i don't it's hard to pick one particular thing i agree with him on this on the back but uh you know being around the process or seeing it you know on tv not you know we're not really understanding the english wheel and uh you know, the, the using the hammers, a uh, lot of that, a lot of clarity there. Obviously, the, the shrinker, um, that thing's awesome. I definitely got to have one. I know one thing this weekend is going to cost me a lot more money than what I paid you. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to cost a lot more. So, yeah, I kind of got, got my, all the things. Uh, I've been talking to Jeff about stuff for my 55. So, yeah, it's going to be an expensive weekend. But it was awesome. I love working with you guys and I learned a lot. Uh, so. Tim, uh, amazing how I guess uh, saved a lot of pieces and reused them or cut pieces out of them. Uh, and then I was visualizing making a whole bunch of pieces back here. We're just covering this back in the window. Two yeah, pieces and saving the parts, reusing it. You know, two pieces and fixes it all. And then, uh, thank you for letting me or showing me how to use the English wheel because I've never used one before. But like you said, it's going to cost me a lot of money now. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. You need sponsorship. From you need sponsorship. Yeah. You'll save it in Bondo, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hopefully, Bondo. hopefully in the future I can get a sponsorship or some deal where, uh, you know, I'd like to work with Woodward Fab or Bailey and uh, be able to give some of these guys, uh, you know, a little discount, a little uh, Mr. Melty discount. So hopefully we can work something out there because I know that everybody in here wants to buy more tools after a weekend like yeah. this. What do you think, Monty? Hey, this was great. Uh, you can read books, you can watch videos, mm -hmm. but until you have a hands-on class like this, you really don't understand it. I was absolutely amazed when you tucked the sail panels in. I just didn't grasp what we were trying to do and seeing it all come together and working with everybody. It's great to have everybody come together and pass off back and forth whatever anybody needed. These classes are wonderful. And Joel's got a pretty good sense of humor too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's a shame. Okay, okay. Sorry. We're all over the place. So, getting to learn how to use an English wheel was definitely a, a huge eye opener for me. It's yeah. something that I've always wondered about, but it was always kind of a mystery on you know, what the process actually looked like in person, getting something in my hands. And then 
the other real eye opener for me was getting to be in the process of doing slanted B pillars. <laughs> <laughs> so that was probably my favorite part of the weekend. Cool. Very good. Isaac? Um, I mean, just the whole process of it all, being able to be a part of from step one, mapping it out to just everything, watching how it all comes together, and also the method, not only with the sail panels, but with also the little cuts on the above the windshield, just how it pulls together and you have that much less work to do on the back side just with a little bit of prep. It's just kind of wild. Manny? Uh, for me, everything, everything, you know, like, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, just the whole process, like, like Monty was saying, you know, you can watch videos, you know, like I, I did watch a lot of YouTube videos before or looked it up online and, and a lot of things you don't understand, but once you are here, I mean, you can, you know, get visualized and be able to put your hands on it. So it's, it's really nice, you know, learning all the process. And for me, you know, not knowing how to weld, it was a really, really great experience, you know, uh, learning how to, you know, uh, mess with a welder and all that. So now I'm a little more confident on, you know, doing it at home. <laughs> and I've welded up about, like, I don't know how many years, and it just sitting in the garage because I never had the you know, the guts to, to play with it. But no, I feel, I feel confident that I can do it, yeah. For more information or to sign up for Chop Class with Joel Davis, go to Chop Class with Joel Davis on Facebook. All the information will be there for where you can sign up for a class near you. If there's not one near you, contact Joel and you can set one up. If you like this video, there'll be two more parts of it coming out in the next few days. So go ahead and subscribe to the Roybo Productions channel here on YouTube. Like this video. Go watch a bunch more. Tell your friends about it. And we'll see you on the next one.